Um, we're pretty close. Um, hi, I'm Councilman Tony Brancatelli. This, uh, this uh, uh, Planning Development Sustainability Committee meeting is uh, I can't hear you now during the COVID-19 emergency declaration in accordance with Ohio's open meeting laws in section 101.21 of the codified ordinances of Cleveland, Ohio, 1976. This meeting is being held using the Zoom platform is being live streamed on YouTube and on Cleveland's channel 20. And also can be seen on Cleveland City Council website and Council's Facebook page. This committee hearing will be conducted as all committee hearings in accordance with council rules and Robert's rules of order. The chair will facilitate the meeting and call on persons to speak. If you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand option on Zoom and please limit your comment to the matters before today's committee. As is usual practice, any actions to be voted on during this committee will be done by voice vote, called and recorded by the committee clerk as required by rule 15. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Brancatelli. Present. Harrison. Here. Gray. Griffin. Here. Foshier Jones. Here. McCormick. Present. Slife. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. The first piece we have on the agenda is ordinance 532. 2021, an emergency ordinance authorizing the director of public safety to enter into an agreement with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District relating to the purchase, lease, and redevelopment of South High School located at 7415 Broadway Avenue to facilitate a public safety training academy, authorizing the mayor and the commissioner of purchase and supplies to purchase the building and property, authorizing a lease back of a portion of the building and property to the school district for a term of 20 years, determining the method of making a public improvement of renovating the building and property authorizing contracts, accepting grants and gifts, and authorizing the direct employment of necessary labor to implement the Department of Public Safety and or Office of Capital Projects. Um, and so, um, uh, Jamie, is this your project to present? Um, good morning, uh, Chairman. Yes, this is my project to uh, present, and we should have folks from Public Safety joining um, along the way here. Here's, here's the director popping in right now. Uh, oh, there he is, great. Welcome, Director Howard. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I had some technical issues I'm on a different computer. All right. Can you um, hear me? Yes, yes we got you live loud and clear. D uh, Director, do you want me to kick this off or do you want to uh, kick this off? Um, we're going to start with our, our piece of legislation here. Okay, sure. I'll start off um, with South High School. South High School gives us a uh, significant opportunity with the division of police, EMS, and fire. It gives us a, a, a much larger space to conduct the training um, that we need uh, to facilitate larger class sizes for our, uni our uniform um, safety divisions. <clears throat> Recently, we had um, an EMT class that we had to find space and we had to uh, rent uh, a portion or a room over at the, uh, the convention center. Um, South High School would have alleviated that, that need to have that. South High School also, also gives the opportunity to clear out a floor of the Justice Center, um, where we can currently conduct our police training academy, which is a cost savings on that lease. Uh, most importantly, it's the very beginning of a pipeline uh, to the uniform um, safety forces from um, high school uh, plans for the future for a cadet program, uh, <clears throat> and creating a transition from uh, young people who are interested in service to the city of Cleveland as part of its uniform safety forces uh, right into public safety. It gives us an increased presence in the community. We'll be able to uh, train um, officers at the, at the very early onset of the academy in community engagement, um, facilitating um, traffic interactions, um, uh, a real bridge between the community and the, um, the division of police, fire, and, and EMS. Something that we um, will talk about tomorrow during the safety is that we're going to keep applications open for police uh, and EMS for paramedics. Uh, council is very aware of the difficulties that we've had in the climate that we're in with recruiting. But by keeping the applications open and working on a rolling basis, uh, quarterly, um, have, having a cutoff date, um, allows us to uh, 
constantly engage with the public to tell them to apply that the applicant that we are always accepting applications for paramedics and for law enforcement. Um, South High School allows us to facilitate to much better facilitate having an open application period where we are constantly taking taking applications. Uh, it's, it's just it's good. It's going to be a huge asset. Uh, we're hoping that we that we have council's support um, uh, with this endeavor. The other portion, and I'll, I'll let Commissioner DeRosa speak to it to a greater extent, is we're partnering with CMSD. We've carved out space as part of this lease back uh, program with CMSD to facilitate uh, a vocational program for high school students, 11th and 12th graders. Um, our academies will be involved with the curriculum. Um, and we'll really be able to grab uh, grab hold of, of young folks while they have an interest in public safety and give them give them something to belong to and, and become stakeholders in the safety and security of the city. Um, I'll turn it over to Commissioner DeRosa and then go from there. Um, thanks, thanks, Director and uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, so. Um, a little bit of history on South High School. Um, so it's about um, 251,000 square feet and it's two story facility. It has a large um, underground parking garage. It has a gymnasium track library football field. And it's also um, adjoined with the city's Stella Walsh Recreation Center, um, which the city owns the building and CMSD owns the land underneath it. We have a ground lease with CMSD. And so altogether, it's 11.52 acres that would be transferred to the city um, under this ordinance authority. Um, and the school itself was closed in 2010. And since that time, um, mm -hmm. the school district has been working with uh, the community and the city to repurpose the building into a productive reuse. Um, currently, it has records retention and a trade shop in it, um, which uh, the district um, will be relocating as a part of this uh, transition over to the city. Um, so the director has uh, gone into uh, the type of training program that, that we intend to, to put into this building. Um, and, and again, it's for um, you know, police, fire and EMS all under one, all under one roof. Um, some of the special uh, elements of this building that are really going to help us out is um, the gymnasium because, because of the physical training and subject control courses. They have a gymnasium unit um, with staff that, that train um, safety forces. Um, and so that would be a, a, a good, uh, uh, you know, a great asset to them. And, and then there'll be sharing of the facilities at Stella Walsh. Um, that public works will allow, um, you know, public safety to use uh, the pool and other facilities at Stella Walsh. And likewise, um, public safety will allow um, the, the rec center to use the gymnasium and football field. Um, and, and so through this, we think it's a real win uh, for the city um, to have this facility. And as well, the underground parking uh, garage is um, not only great because it's underground parking, but um, safety can use this for training activities during um, inclement weather, such as vehicle stops and approaches, citizen encounters, agility tests, and, and so forth. Um, so um, I will, um, you know, touch on the relationship that we've, um, with um, the, the partnership that we've come to with the Cleveland Municipal School District. Um, uh, you know, the director spoke to um, how, you know, all, all, you know, a lot of big cities are struggling to recruit and retain qualified candidates. Um, but we think that this partnership with CMSD will be uh, will allow us to develop a pipeline, if you will, um, of um, students for a career path into public safety. And so what is envisioned is that um, students will be instructed by CMSD teachers for a certain number of hours or days per week at South High School in conjunction with the Division of Division Academy staff. And so that's that's a program that is going to be um, fine-tuned um, you know, after this legislation passes and, and, and put forth into a, um, a curriculum program. Um, now, the type of transaction that we have here is something that Cleveland um, CMSD has done several times recently. It's authorized under the Ohio Revised Code. And it's a, it's a purchase and lease back. And, and essentially what the code allows to, um, us to do is 
they can um, sell the building to us if if the buyer agrees to lease back all or a portion of the building to the school district. And and so what's going to happen here is we've walked through the building and we've identified six classrooms and some adjacent areas um, that can easily be um, cordoned off from the rest of the building so that we have a secure facility for the rest of the building. But we have a certain number of classrooms that would be designated for uh, the students and the staff to um, to to learn in um, and. The way that this uh, purchase and leaseback works is that um, the 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 buyer needs to make certain improvements into the building that would that would benefit the students, and so that's that's seen pretty broadly. It could be mechanical systems, it could be the roof, it could be um, you know the parking parking lot. It doesn't have to just be those six classrooms, but um, essentially. Um, if we, so the, the property is appraised at $435,000. And if we have sufficient improvements um, in the building generally that, that benefits their students, then um, we would receive a, a credit against the purchase price um, for those improvements. And, you know, in other words, if we spend more than $435,000 um, to the benefit of, of, of the students, um, then the entire purchase price would be offset. So that's the structure that we have set up here. Um, and uh, we would have through June 30th of 2023 to make those improvements and document them to Cleveland uh, Municipal School District to, um, to settle up on uh, the purchase price. Um, the lease term would be 30 years. Um, the rent, um, for, for the first year, CMSD would pay 100% of, of the operating and maintenance costs, meaning, you know, electric, um, cutting grass, you know, any utilities. After that, they would just pay their proportionate share, which when you look at the size of the building and the size of the classroom areas is, is going to be less than 5% of, of, you know, the total um, operating costs for the building. Um, and then the final piece of this legislation is authorization to go through the typical um, process that capital projects goes through to um, bid out and identify contractors to do both the design and the construction um, work um, associated with, um, you know, a typical capital project. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to either the director or, or to the chairman for, for questions. There, can uh, someone from the school district um, speak on uh, uh, their, what their, uh, Engagement is going to be on the classrooms. Sure, um, Councilman, to you and the committee um, to further clarify the the layout and the use of the space itself. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with um, the career pathing and the Say Yes scholarship program that the district has been um, executing for the last couple of years. A year ago, the um, public safety programs from Martin Luther King High School were transferred to the Glenville High School campus, and there were um, improvements made there to allow for intentional recruitment of our young people um, in high school to explore career pathing in safety um, and public safety. We anticipate that the facility itself would be used for upperclassmen, so 11th and 12th graders, um, once they um, really understand the type of career pathing they're taking plot out a future um, accessing the Say Yes um, scholarship program to pay for post-secondary training, that students would be transported there, acclim be acclimated to what a, you know, a professional training facility looks like and to further tease out their passion and interest in public safety. So again, it would be um, for older students um, who are choosing to pursue a career path in public safety and we would continue to use the Glenville High School campus as sort of the pathway um, for recruitment from students um, from eighth grade programs across the district. Um, the Say Yes program provides ample mentoring and counseling for students. So we see this as a really good opportunity to have a bricks and mortar um, pipeline location that students can touch and feel and see and understand that um, the city you know, is investing in these facilities and that um, that would be one reason why they might, um, you know, pick the um, career pathway of public safety. And, and um, go, go ahead. 
Go ahead, no, go, go ahead Chairman. Um, well, I was going to see if uh, uh, Director Howard had additional comments. Um, thank you, Chair. I would um, defer to DC Fay um, to allow him to speak to the benefit of the Division of Police. Great, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? We got you loud and clear. All right. For those who don't know me, my name is Daniel Fay. I'm the Deputy Chief of Administrative Operations for the Division of Police. And one of my roles and responsibilities is to oversee training for the division. Um, so with South High, I see three distinct opportunities for the Division of Police and the Department of Safety larger. Um, increased space, um, that's the additional classrooms and gym and auditorium that were referenced. Um, the indoor parking garage is, is gonna be fantastic for inclement weather. When we do uh, traffic stops or even field force training. We need a large um, platform for our large exercises. Um, the second opportunity I see is uh, improved instructional strategies. So what do I mean by that? I mean, transitioning from the lecture-based um, traditional training to scenario-based. And the, there was a group that went down to Columbus PD. I know uh, Council President uh, Blaine Griffin went with us. Um, they talked about at their facility, scenario-based training, where they have over 100 different scenarios they can expose their recruits and their officers to um, because they have the facilities to transition. That's something that we that we're definitely going to use South High for. Um, interdepartmental scenarios. So on a lot of scenes, EMS, fire, and police respond for an accident or for a drug overdose. You know, how can we work collaboratively together? And by doing that, we need to train. Um, and there's an old adage is, is if I participate, I learn effectively. And that's what scenario-based student-centered training is all about. I think South High does give us that. And then the third opportunity I foresee is uh, increased training classes um, for recruits, for annual recertification, for advanced training. Um, we can do that simultaneously. And then another opportunity floating out there is we can be a regional OPADA training center. So OPADA is the Ohio Peace Officers Training Association. Um, what that does is they'll, they'll, they'll provide training and our officers and officers throughout the region can report to that training. Um, it's a, it's a cost-free um, opportunity for us, which is huge. And then we can also do joint training with our law enforcement partners at the federal, state, and local level. Um, South High does give us that, that opportunity to, to expand our training. I have something. Uh, this is DC O'Neill. I'd like to add one thing. I think also by having the, tra uh, the training facility out in the community, it allows the community to see us training and it might engage more younger uh, teenagers and more students to actually want to interact with us and maybe become either law enforcement, fire, or EMS, because they don't really see us down, down at the Justice Center training. So I think, I think that would, uh, would give us the ability to interact a lot better with the community out there. Great. Um, anything else, Director Howard or uh, take, Commissioner DeRosa? Take any questions, Chair. Uh, great. Um, uh, Bob, before we jump into a, a number of questions, I'd like to have, uh, he's a, a council president elect. Um, so he's not quite in that spot yet, uh, but uh, he is the chairperson of the safety committee. If I can have uh, Councilman Blaine Griffin speak on uh, his um, uh, trip down to Columbus to see the training facility there. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. And uh, this is a phenomenal opportunity uh, to really do something that I think can change how we do scenario-based training, how we uh, create a pipeline for young people in CMSD to become police officers. What I experienced in Columbus uh, really, to be honest with you, was uh, top-notch. And quite frankly, um, you know, I'm wondering why we haven't done it yet. Uh, it's really like basically having a public safety campus. Uh, they really did have um, fire as well as, um, you know, joint training amongst all of the other safety forces, which I was impressed with um, because we often know that fire EMS and, uh, and police have to show up and uh, do with uh, scenario-based training. So I think the opportunities are tremendous. Um, 
I wish all of my colleagues would have had a chance to go down and see what Columbus had to uh, had to offer. Uh, Columbus is probably, and I'm estimating director, probably going to have to get another school because they've been so successful in how they've actually uh, operated this school that they're probably going to have to wind up getting another school. So I see this as a great opportunity to repurpose a school and really accomplish some of the things that we want to do around training, around equipping our officers, as well as uh, making sure life of a councilman, the phone always uh, goes off. Uh, but um, also to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we recruit better uh, by having CMSD students there, as well as the gym. I know that the gym now that we have is antiquated um, to have the facilities where they can actually have these kind of this kind of a gym uh, was good, too. So I was really impressed by Columbus. I think this is a neighborhood asset. I know we've been trying to do a lot with South High School for a long time. And I believe that this is um, something that's a good use for it. I will say one more thing and then I'll turn it over to my colleagues, Mr. Chair. Um, we also have to uh, realize that this is a safety facility. Uh, one of the things that I know that um, I think it was Lynn Rodman from Slavic Village went down there because you know they really did you know, want to have community uses and everything else. And they do have community uses for the Columbus facility. So I really encourage uh, this committee to talk with her about maybe some ideas that she had as far as making sure that uh, there can be some community usage. But this is a safety facility. So it did have to have a lot of areas that were secure. Uh, so I want to make sure that people know that as well. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairman Griffin. And um... Uh, it was uh, 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 the community organizer, Susan Gordon, that went down. Um, and uh, Susan Gordon uh, came up with a, a great list of uh, alternative uses of areas that can be secure, like the gymnasium, which can be quarantined off. Um, back in your basketball days, you may remember the tournaments that were played in that gym uh, for many years. And then also the library, which can, uh, we talked when we toured the space um, to be used for community space, um, potentially also uh, partnering with our um, uh, Cleveland Public Library, as uh, they, they are looking to upgrade um, their spaces around the city, that, that library and auditorium space can be also uh, quarantined off to keep a secure campus. Um, and uh, uh, Councilman, you, you failed to mention that you actually uh, uh, spent time uh, uh, living around the corner on East 76th uh, 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 in your younger days. So uh, 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 know the area quite well. Um, uh, so we have uh, three council members up, Councilman McCormick, then Councilman Harrison, then Councilman Slay. Councilman McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll, I'll be brief, but I just wanted to echo uh, your enthusiasm and the enthusiasm of Councilman Griffin as well um, on this project. We've been talking about this type of collaboration with the school district and our community for a while. Um, so I'm happy to see that it's, you know, um, moving forward in one of our neighborhoods. Um, to really link uh, not only training, but also our, our young people into careers in public safety. Um, we, know, we know that uh, while you know, tough careers, they're also uh, rewarding. Um, so I'm just really excited to see, you know, as a city, us really take a step forward to um, you know, really connect into our community, to recruit folks from our city uh, into our safety forces um, and you know, to provide that companion with training. So um, just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Director Howard. Um, I think this is a great project. It's a great reuse. The school district, of course, for being a partner on this as well. Um, again, I think this is gonna have a lot of long-term positive benefits for our community. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Councilman Hairston. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I too just want to congratulate uh, Director Howard and his team for seeing this through. I, I recall this conversation coming up uh, many, many months ago, and they have really worked diligently to uh, make this happen. Uh, as we as we heard from uh, other members, that this is this really can be something great, right? If 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 done right uh, here in our neighborhood, to take young people who many times look around their community and aspire to be what they see in their neighborhood. And to have this training facility right in the center of our community is huge and can really be a game changer. It's not only enough to go out and find people who look like those who they serve in these uh, roles as police officers, firefighters, and EMS workers, but it's also important that we find those who understand the community. And so if we attract those who are from the community, 
And I believe that this center will help us do that. It's central. One of the barriers that I often hear, and I've gotten calls, hey, councilman, I want to go down and fill out an application, but I have to travel so far. I don't know. I don't have a ride there. Can you help me with bus fare? Can you help me buy a bus pass? But some people can walk out their doors, walk down the street, and be able to apply and be able to train and be able to engage uh, with this facility here. So I think it's a, a, an amazing project. I think this is, this is going to be great for our community. And it really, again, as I said, remove one of those barriers, barriers of access because this is right here in our community. So again, I applaud the Mr. Chairman yourself, uh, Director Howard, Mr. DeRosa, and everyone who helped bring this together. And to have the school district on board with this early on is also amazing. As we heard that MLK closed and the, and the training programs and other uh, programs moved to Glenville High School, you know, having the services provided there and then also these services uh, potentially in this part of town would just truly be amazing. So I'm happy to support this. Uh, and I really, really look forward to seeing the great things that will come out of this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman. And just to even expand one more on, on the notion around uh, not just applying, but also throughout the training program, it has been an impediment for um, folks in Cleveland that have to go yes. out of town for weeks and then leave their family. Um, uh, but having training right here in Cleveland um, really opens up the opportunity for folks to be recruited and trained um, without having to leave town. It does. And then, you know, even with the, the, uh, the, the, the pay training that they receive, you know, they, they can uh, not have to worry about spending those dollars to commute back and forth. It really is just a an amazing opportunity. And, and one last thing, if I can, Mr. Chairman, the presence that this facility will bring to that neighborhood, you know, to have that police presence in that neighborhood, and again, for folks to see, I think would also uh, be an amazing thing for the neighborhood as well. Thank you. Great, great. Thank you very much. Councilman Seif. Thank you, and um, I, I share my, my colleagues and, and your excitement about this project. Um, it, it's going to be great for the city and great for Slavic Village. My question is uh, just specific to uh, what Mr. DeRosa was saying with uh, the purchase price and then capital improvements. Um, through the chair to Mr. DeRosa, it's by June 30th of 2023, I think I wrote down, that is the deadline for making $435,000 worth of capital repairs. Is that correct? Just to offset that purchase price? Uh, Mr. Chairman of the Councilman, that's correct. We have a sense of additional capital repairs, an estimate or an engineering report of what's necessary beyond that 435, because I, as, as excited as we all are about this project, I think we all recognize the city is taking on a new uh, uh, capital asset. Uh, we have sometimes arguably a mixed record of, of maintaining our facilities. So I wanna make sure that we know what we're getting ourselves into. If I, if I could expand on that question just a little bit, uh, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I know that we've already passed a bond that includes um, a couple million dollars in capital repairs, but can you talk about additional funding? Is ARPA funding available for this project? And um, talk about the, the physical uh, analysis of the project. Okay, um, so Mr. Chairman and also to the councilman. So, um, so yeah, so the 435,000 is uh, much more is needed to, to improve the building. And, um, and so we have sold um, $5 million of uh, facility bonds to be invested into this property. And um, the, um, the, the detailed analysis and final cost estimates would come after this legislation is passed. But we know that uh, the $5 million will be enough to get the programs um, up and running and operational. And, um, you know, the director had certain... Um, dates by which he, he anticipates having um, operations in the building. And, um, and so it would be um, a phased improvement project. Um, we'd have to go through all the bidding you know, projects uh, process to get the consultants on board to, to do all the work associated with this. Um, but we have analyzed the building. Um, we, you know, there's some questions previously about the condition of the roof. Um, we know that there's a good um, five to 10 year life left on the roof. Um, we've done an analysis of, of, of items like that to know that, um, you know, the $5 million is, is enough to get us up and running, do improvements, make it safe. Um, and um, so, but beyond that, we don't have, um, you know, we don't have the consultants engaged yet to give us a, a detailed cost estimate of, of exactly what we would um, hit first as far as renovations or exactly, um, you know, 
um, how um, the, the initial classrooms would be set up versus um, we have we have an idea, but how you know how it would be phased into the bigger program um, over the over the years. Um, our so funding. Just to, so just to ahead. clarify, uh, so folks understand, the five million dollars that's already been bonded is is just that early phase. It's not a complete dollar investment. We know there'll have to be additional assessments and additional investments to go along, but that gets you up and operating to get the classrooms going. And as Director Howard said. Um, being able to do classrooms early on there, um, uh, uh, but the the all the scope and magnitude of the project that would mirror what we saw in Columbus um, will take additional funding. So, so you were going to mention about ARPA and other funding. Yeah, just to just to, on that point, um, Councilman, I I know that it would be eligible for ARPA, but I'm not involved in those conversations, so I can't um, you know wager whether it's it's being discussed or not. So that's uh, something we can work with uh, Council President-elect and the current Council President. And as uh, I know, uh, Councilman Slife and Councilman McCormick have been talking uh, extensively with um, Councilman Spencer and others around ARPA designated projects. So um, I, I think this is the, the Columbus project was $25 million um, um, to uh, build that facility out. Um, but we wanna make sure we have plenty of resources to be able to do what we're all talking about what our end game is here. Um, so even if we carve out a small percentage from ARPA, um, being able to have those funds set aside because this is a, a live now project. So um, that, that's that's good to hear. Councilman Slife. Thank you. I think that's all very important information and certainly uh, the, the need uh, justifies the expense. It's, I think that's just um, keeping on top of those numbers. I know it's not always the most exciting part of the job, but um, you know, certainly I think I speak for uh, my, myself, but many others that are the worst case scenario is that, you know, our uh, investment in, in a city facility takes away from our ability to do parks and other capital needs as well. Uh, the only thing that I think we should just all kind of put on our radar, something on the back burner is, is also aggressively be looking for other funding sources. I know we received uh, all the members from Senator Brown's office yesterday, a grand opportunity uh, related to, you know, like, uh, you know, fire services. So that that specific one is probably um, not going to be applicable for this, just that it's all unfolding too quickly. But uh, there will be opportunities coming down the road for outside dollars, and we should make um, maximum use of that uh, just to just to hopefully be able to even if it ends up being ARPA or any other funding source, be able to recapture those dollars and put them elsewhere. So uh, thank you. Thank and, you. And, and I, um, as, as a uh, community resident, uh, I, I think uh, more than uh, anything else, we want to be able to drive by that facility and be proud of it. Um, it's now boarded and the landscaping is uh, quite shabby. Um, and I think, uh, you know, having that front door being a gem of um, um, as we continue to recruit and as we um, and uh, just to be clear, and I know safety director, you can speak on this as well. And I think uh, uh, Assistant uh, Director Hennessy um, also um, spoke on it around, uh, spoke on it previously with me around recruiting other cities, that this could be an income stream for the city because we know in Columbus of all the municipalities, um, the partnerships that we can do here in this region um, is significant. Um, uh, Director Howard? Yeah, Chair, and I was, I was gonna actually get, get to that. That's a, that's a fantastic point. Uh, and DC Fay can touch on it even further is that OPADA has even, this is something that will attract OPADA for us to do training for other law enforcement agencies. And definitely um, when you think about our MOUs with our partners, we have the opportunity to create some uniformity and share the benefit that we've obtained through the consent decree with other divisions that work closely in that neighbor, neighbor our city. Um, and then, you know, this is, this, is, this is, when we're talking about phases, right? We're talking about getting police, fire, and EMS inside. We're talking about bringing CMSD in. We're also thinking, we're looking down the road um, at our training for emergency call takers as well. Because once we have this pipeline in place and it's sound and secure, you know, you can't become a police officer until 21. So we don't want to lose young people who want to become police officers from that age from 18 to 21. So what are we going to have them do, right? We're going to have them, you know, assist our safety forces. You know, uh, go through training at our, our um, as as a call taker. There are there are uses for these young people that we don't have to say, you know, go back out into the streets, come back when you're 21, right? We can 
we can bring them in, um, utilize them, give them skills, right? Give them jobs, right? We, we, we haven't even talked about um, the middle of the pipe, which is the, the cadet program. And we can hold on to these young people and also use them as recruitment tools, you know, so that when young people are out there in the community looking for something to belong to, and right now, you know, gang life is attractive to some of these folks. Some, some of the, they're, they're looking for something to, 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 to matter to, right? And what we're saying is that, you know, in high school and then careers afterwards, in between, you are going to matter to us all the way, right? And, and be able to reach back even, even further. This, the potential for this is, um, is enormous. Uh, and you know, a lot of thought has gone has gone behind it, and a lot of thought is going to continue to go to it. And the councilman's life's concern is that, you know, public safety has every interest, along with council, to be good stewards of the public's of public's funds. Um, when we talk about the condition and the, the the landscaping, public works part of the deal is that public works is going to maintain the property, um, and that's going to be them doing their share for this. So this is going to be this this is going to be a beautiful facility. It's going to be in transition. We're going to add to it. Um, to, to President-elect uh, Griffin's point is that at some point we're going to have to outgrow this, and we're going to have to have another discussion with council and talk about you know what's what's Plan D kind of thing. So there's a lot of potential here. And and I apologize, uh, uh, Director. Is uh, what what is it called? The Rangers? Is it the Rangers and Cadets? What's the uh, younger uh, uh, students that are engaged with the police? So we have our explorers. Explorers, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and we're looking to grow that. Um, Commander Johnny Johnson, uh, we just did a graduation. Um, there, was a, there were about six kids. Uh, with South High School, we can, it's a great recruitment tool and we can greatly expand that. Um, and, and just, to, just you know, to add to this is that, you know, imagine um, our EMS folks doing CPR training to folks in the gym, right? Really getting young people involved in, in, in and getting them more focused on life saving than what we've been experiencing over the last few uh, that last few months, right? We're, we're going to do a shift, a paradigm shift in, in thought process in the community. Yeah, I've uh, I had the pleasure of uh, uh, meeting a number of the explorers years ago when we used to do the the bike ride, the safety bike rides around the neighborhood, and and some of those explorers who are now police officers are just amazing, uh, amazing uh, young officers in our system. Um, and I just also wanted to uh, mention, and I know uh, maybe this is uh, Commissioner DeRosa, but um, you know the connection to Stella Walsh, Commissioner, you mentioned a, a couple of times um, in our capital budget, um, outside of um, the funding for this is uh, funding for imp making improvements at Stella Walsh. Um, to, to the chairman, correct. I don't, I don't have that exact number on me, but that is um, in the pipeline as well. So to have, those two sources of funding coming together into the one property, the 12 acres is, is gonna make a big difference. Great. Um, do I have any other, uh, anyone, any other comments from my colleagues or any of the um, other uh, uh, CPD staff or uh, CMSD staff on there? Um, I know we, we talked significantly about um, um, having that uh, gym open to the public um, and that connection to the rec center. Um, so that cooperation um, is significant. And likewise, in the football field, which is now being used um, by our Comanches and our Stella Walsh Bears cheerleaders, um, a lot of connection with the, the community from in that, in that respect. Um, I know we still have to look at um, uh, the library and, and what do we, how do we utilize that as community space if, if possible or with the uh, Cleveland Public Library. There's a lot of different uh, moving parts um, uh, for that to move forward. So um, I think this is, as we stated, is a, a great opportunity. Um, and I don't know if I need to do this disclosure or not. Um, let me see if I can. Um, so uh, here's the uh, uh, South High School um, as it was um, operating. Uh, you can see oh, what a wonderful facility um, that that is. Um, and uh, let's see, um, there was one other uh, important, um, uh, if I can find it without, um, and then here's a shout of a graduate of South High School um, in 1975. Um, 
And uh, you know, you can see those amazing activities called um, hockey team, chess club, and teachers aid. Um, that the <laughs> on this point, Mr. Chair, I, I just like yeah. to remind the committee that you know, capital improvements do have a public art component that's required by ordinance. Uh, so if we're just able to receive a copy of that picture, I'm sure we can incorporate it into the project. I, I think we'll uh, we'll stop that screen share right now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> This is a, a great opportunity for our, our region and uh, in our city. So we're pretty excited about it. Um, any further questions or comments with that? Um, 532 2021 stands approved as read. Thank you all very much. Looking forward to the next steps in this next phase on this thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, uh, next up, uh, now that uh, um, Director Ebersol had to endure um, seeing my high school photo. Um, we have uh, uh, Ordinance 761-2021, an emergency ordinance authorizes the Director of Economic Development to enter a grant agreement with Front Exhibition Company or its designee to provide economic development assistance to partially finance costs associated with the 2022 Front Exhibition. Director. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna stay in the theme of art and uh, photography. Um, <laughs> the Front ex Exhibition uh, was held in 2018 uh, as a, a triennial um, exhibition. Um, obviously 2021 did not work out as anyone foresaw in 2018. And so now the, the planning is fully underway for the exhibition to take place in 2022, um, uh, beginning in the summer in July. Um, as part of the contribution to um, uh, fundraising to get the exhibition started, uh, we're proposing here to enter into an agreement to provide $300,000 to support the costs of uh, getting the exhibition up and running, uh, marketing it, and, and, and so forth. Um, overall, it's anticipated this is going to be about a little bit more than a $2.5 million effort. Um, a wide variety that um, fundraising has come from uh, foundations and uh, private donors, but there's also um, and requests for the governments as well. Uh, in 2018, um, Front brought in about 225,000, 227,000 visitors um, to the various sites. 90,000 or so were estimated to be from outside of the city of Cleveland, uh, the Cleveland region. Um, and overall, uh, economic impact was, was determined by uh, CSU to be estimated about $31 million. The goal for 2022 was to bring in uh, about 200,000 visitors from outside the region and, and bring that economic impact up towards uh, $50 million. So um, if anyone had the, the opportunity to go out and, and look at the uh, some of the exhibitions that were there in 2018, I think this is really a, a, a pretty unique um, program uh, for the for this area and for the country as a large, um, a series of large indoor and outdoor uh, exhibitions really throughout the whole community. And so I uh, can draw some of the tourist money at, at to areas of the city outside of sort of the traditional um, downtown districts, but out into the community as well. So um, we think this is a great project. We're excited that they're moving forward with it and, and with a little bit of the hiccup from the pandemic, uh, excited this is still going forward and hope uh, hope to see that uh, amount of those people brought into our region next year. Great, uh, thank you very much, Director. And uh, just on that point, um, you know, we, we hope to be out of the pandemic and hope to be fully uh, functioning as, as uh, we can under the new normal in 2022. Um, so is that is our funding predicated that this is in fact done as a live event? Yeah, yeah, um, it, it, there'll be, there'll be um, indoor and outdoor events and, and it, it will be done live. That was the reason behind the pushback from 21 to 22. Okay, um, uh, questions on 761, 2021? Uh, Councilman McCormick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate that. I just wanted to speak in support of this um, this ordinance and this request. Um, you know, front, which you know goes east to west across the city, um, is a really exciting project that started in 2018. You know, to bring contemporary art to the city and the community. Um, there's a lot of really uh, smart and diverse group of folks that are working on this project. Um, and I think it's one of those things that unfortunately got um, kind of slapped by the pandemic, but 
as we come out of the pandemic um, and everyone gets vaccinated because everyone's going to do that, um, I just, I'm sorry, sorry, hold on. I knocked on my desk to knock on wood and my dogs thought someone was at the front door. I apologize <laughs> about that. Um, anyways, I thought, I thought is, it was resident uh, complaints. So, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anyways, the point is, is that this is a really exciting opportunity for the city to really grow this art exhibition throughout uh, all of our neighborhoods. So I just wanted to speak in support of this. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, uh, I, I uh, concur. I think the, uh, um, the, the art community and, and the front uh, exhibition um, really has been highlighting um, significant presence for our city and um, continues to grow our arts community in a, in a real dramatic way. Um, any further questions or comments? Um, no further questions or comments. Uh, Ordinance 761-2021 stands approved as read. Thank you all very much. Um, uh, my colleagues for DPS, um, we're going to have a pretty lively agenda uh, next week, so please carve out enough time. We have a number of uh, uh, big issues to get through um, uh, before we hit the end of the year. So trying to clear my calendar before my end of year ends. So um, thank you all. Meeting adjourned.